वक्रतुंड महाकाय सूर्यकोटि समप्रभ निर्विघ्न कुरु मे देव सर्व कार्यशु सर्वदा आप सभी माननीय विशिष्ट जनों को गणेश चतुर्थी की हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं आज का दिन इतिहास के सुनहरे पन्नों में अंकित होने का दिन है यह दिन परिवर्तन का है एक नए शुभ आरंभ का पुरातन से नवीनता की ओर बढ़ने का परंपराओं को साथ लिए आधुनिकता के साथ कदम ताल करने का और इसी पल को एक साथ जीने के लिए हम सब एकत्रित हुए हैं संसद के ऐतिहासिक केंद्रीय कक्ष में आप सभी माननीय विशिष्ट जनों का हार्दिक स्वागत अभिनंदन एवं शत शत वंदन कार्यक्रम को प्रारंभ करने हेतु मेरा सादर अनुरोध माननीय संसदीय कार्य मंत्री जी से कि वे स्वागत संबोधन प्रस्तुत करें आप सभी को नमस्कार आई एम फीलिंग प्राउड प्रिवलेज टू बी दार्ट ऑफ दिस हिस्टोरिक ओकेजन वेयर वी हैव असेंबल्ड इन दिस आइकॉनिक सेंट्रल हॉल फॉर द सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ आवर सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेट क्रिटिक जर्नी एंड शिफ्टिंग टू द न्यू पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम ऑनरेबल वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंडिया एंड द चेयरमैन ऑफ राज्यसभा श्री जगदीप धनकरी जी धनकर जी टू ग्रेसिंग दिस मोमेंटस ओकेजन आई वेलकम द मोस्ट पॉपुलर डायनेमिक ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी हु हैज बीन रियल फोर्स बिहाइंड गिविंग अस द न्यू टेम्पल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इन द शेप ऑफ न्यू स्टेट ऑफ आर्ट पार्लियामेंट हाउस बिल्डिंग व्हिच इज एमर्जिंग एज ए सिंबल ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत आई ऑल्सो वेलकम ऑनरेबल स्पीकर श्री ओम बिरला जी डिप्टी चेयरमैन राज्यसभा श्री हरिवंश जी लीडर ऑफ द राज्यसभा श्री पीयूष गोयल जी लीडर ऑफ द अपोजिशन राज्यसभा श्री मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे जी लीडर ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट अपोजिशन पार्टी इन द लोकसभा श्री अधिरंजन चौधरी जी ऑल माय कलीग मिनिस्टर्स अदर सीनियर लीडर्स फेलो एम पी फ्रॉम द बोथ दाउसेस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट टू दिस फंक्शन हुई चैथ बीन ऑर्गेनाइज टू कमेमरेट द लास्ट सिटिंग ऑफ द बोथ द हाउस हेल्ड एस्टरडे इन द रिस्पेक्टिव चेंबर्स टूडे ऑनवर्ड्स our two houses of the parliament shall have their sittings in the new parliament house building we all know that this central hall has witnessed transfer of power from britain to bharat the formation and adoption of our constitution by the constituent assembly has been host to some very important occasions like roll out of gst one tax one nation a finest example of cooperative federalism in our parliamentary democracy there are there were three joint sittings of the both the houses of the parliament for resolving the deadlocks under the article 108 that is the dowry production the dowry prohibition bill 1959 the banking service commission repeal bill 1978 prevention of terrorism bill 2002 you all know that lok sabha and raj sabha were sitting in this building since 13th may 1952 along with all my fellow members of the parliament and other stakeholders of this parliament i am very happy and enthusiastic about the functions of the two houses of the parliament henceforth from the new building which is the symbol of new and emerging bharat paving the way for the developed nation as envisaged by prime minister by 2047 at the end i would like to say that our journey so far is marked by excellent achievements 
memorable experience, difficult challenges, remarkable milestones. As we go ahead, let us learn from our previous experiences so far and reaffirm our commitment to our historic democratic values and tirelessly work for the betterment of the person in last in the queue. Jai Hind. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मानेवर अब संबोधन हेतु मैं आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगी लोकसभा में कार्यकाल की दृष्टि से वरिष्ठतम वर्तमान संसद सदस्य श्रीमती मेनका गांधी जी को Honorable Vice President, Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Prime Minister, Ministers and esteemed colleagues of this distinguished house. Actually, I'm as surprised to be here as you are to see me. This is a historic day today. I am proud to be part of this historical moment when a government under the leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has undertaken to repair the deep-rooted asymmetry and to give an equal share in India's future to all of us women. I am grateful for the honor. I am grateful for the honor you have given me of speaking about my years in Parliament. We are going to a new building and hopefully this grand edifice will reflect the aspirations of a new Bharat. Today, I have been entrusted with the responsibility of addressing this esteemed assembly as the most senior member, uh, most senior parliamentarian in the Lok Sabha. I entered parliament at the age of 32, nine years after the death of my husband. My debut was as Minister for Environment. Today, 35 years later, I have spent most of my adult life in this institution and I have seen seven prime ministers and the shaping of grand history. It, it has been an arduous, rocky road. I had several terms as an independent member and finally joined the Bharatiya Janata Party under Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji's leadership in 2004. Since then, I have remained a proud member of the BJP as well as this August House. Being a member of parliament is an immense responsibility as it entails safeguarding the trust of lakhs of voters who elect us to be their voice. You are given power, but this power must always be used for their good. The job demands unwavering commitment, moral rectitude, and courage. Basically, it demands great love for your country and infinite kindness towards all. Each one of us gets this opportunity to make a difference, provided we sublimate our own ambitions and see ourselves only as vessels or bridges or protectors of all the beings that need us, the last person in India who believes himself forgotten, people who cannot navigate for themselves and appoint us as their helmsmen. I have tried to make the most of every minute to bring about change wherever I am, whether as environment minister, when many institutions and laws that safeguard us were passed, as social justice minister setting up Alimco, that which now looks after all the disabled in the country, Childline, which was regarded internationally as the best institution for looking after street children, stopping child labor in the carpet industry. You can change things wherever you are. For instance, in the opposition as a BJP member, as chairperson of the often ignored assurances committee. We changed the way people were experimented on by pharmaceutical companies. They were not paid or even asked before becoming guinea pigs. This was changed by us. During Atalji's time, we brought in the vital red and green dot on foods, allowing people to know whether they were eating vegetarian, non-vegetarian food. We repaired an institutional deception by food companies. No service, no job is too small that it should not be taken seriously. My happiest moment was being given the responsibility by the Prime Minister who coined the phrase Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao. Within, 
within two years, we changed the thought of the country, the entire thought of the country. And the statistics show that it is a lasting change. From 130 women per thousand, a shameful statistic, it rose to 950. Crores of girls were saved. Not only that, it is now seen as a shame and a crime to do away with girl children, whether in the womb or newly born. Now that we are going into a new building, a new phase, I want to tell all the young people here that politics is never fulfilling unless you have a grand passion and a commitment outside it, unless a fire of curiosity burns within you. No service is too small in the service of Mother India. What I have learned is that each constituency is your family. Within my family, there are a million microcosms of individual families. Each of them depend on us. We are a part of their lives as they are of ours. I have seen my primary duty to look after each family that has placed itself in my care by electing me, by seeing me as one of their own. In this matter, I wish to say that the Prime Minister has seen beyond people as a statistic and has meticulously seen to the needs of each individual family. Opening, opening bank accounts, giving dignity in the form of toilets, home water taps, building homes for the poor, gas cylinders, giving young people loans, skilling them, protecting them through the largest pandemic in history, seeing that no one remained hungry. Before I end, I would like to tell you a few things that I have learned in my long journey so far. Never give up. There are times in all our lives where the world sits heavy on our shoulders and there doesn't seem any path ahead. It will take courage, determination, and a commitment to something larger than ourselves to forge ahead. Have faith in the goodness of your fellow man. Quieten your mind and soldier on. Believe in yourself. You are an instrument of goodness. If you fight for good, you will always be protected. Use the pain that we all have in our hearts to make yourself a better human being, not to embitter you. Use the pain in your heart to see the pain in the hearts of millions of beings around you and dedicate your life to them. I want to speak to all the women here. The world is still an unequal place and we as women need to be the greatest champions of and for each other. We need to support and protect each other, especially young women across the social spectrum who lead a marginalized existence so that they have the ability to forge their own destinies. There is no greater power in the world than the power of empathy and kindness. And this transforms the life of someone weaker than you. Kindness serves as its own reward. The greatest bank balance that we will ever possess is that of good deeds that we leave in our wake. That is the only legacy that will remain. My faith in God is unwavering. I see him in everyone and everything. I see everything as sacred. I leave you with one thought. We are all part of one divine thread and we are all connected, closer than we can imagine. Let us, irrespective of any differences we may have, wish happiness, protection, and on this holy day of Ganesh Chaturthi, a life free of obstacles for us and all our countrymen. Illuminate the lamp of goodness in our hearts. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मैम आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा ये वो देश है जहां बेटियां आगे बढ़ती हैं ये वो देश है जहां परंपराओं के साए में आधुनिकता पनपती है ये वो देश है वसुधैव कुटुंबकम जिसका नारा है विश्वगुरु भारत ये देश हमारा है अब मेरा सादर अनुरोध लोकसभा में सबसे बड़े विपक्षी दल के नेता श्री अधिरंजन चौधरी जी से कि वे अपना संबोधन प्रस्तुत करें Honorable Vice President of India, Honorable Speaker Lok Sabha, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Parliamentary Affairs Minister of both the houses, Opposition Leader Sikh Khargeji, all my senior leaders and distinguished, esteemed colleagues of both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Having seized this opportunity without making 
any compunction, without mincing any word, I must state that I feel elevated and elated of having been stood in this podium, which had witnessed a caravan of historical episode and numerous, numerous momentous events in the midst of the galaxy of luminaries who had rigged up their brain and burned the midnight oil to frame the Constitution of India in this august house, which is called at the time Constituent Assembly. So we are proud of all of them, numbering 389 members, including 296 from British India and 93 from princely states. In this house also, in this house, in the year 1947, 22nd January, the objectives resolution, numbering eight was passed, was adopted, which was proposed by Jahulal Nehruji also, which had inspired the shaping of our constitution in subsequent stages also. So now, in this august house, all of us are well experienced and known the journey, the odyssey of our constitution from colonial past to independent India. We have observed the transition of the destiny of this great country named after India. It is astonished to note that those 389 members intensively discussed among them for two years, 11 months, and 19 days, and produced the largest constitution of the world led by Baba Sahib Ambedkar, the father of Indian constitution. We have been gifted with 395 articles. Also, 22 parts and 8 schedules. So naturally, the house, which is called Central Hall, it is a historic hall. It is not, it, it will not be known by simply its architectural splendor, but its illustrious legacy. Now I come to the point that our ability to attain developed nation status by 2047 hinges on the active involvement of our citizens and the unwavering dedication of their representatives. The groundwork laid in the formative years of our nationhood and also the subsequent years has empowered us significantly. However, we are confronted with intricate challenges that require immediate attention and resolution as we progress towards this objective. I don't have any idea of what is called and how a country to be recognized as developed country by any designation. I don't have any idea of any global consensus is existed or not, because when we see other developed countries among the various key determinants one determinant is always followed, that is Human Development Index. And in so far as Human Development Index, India has been lagging behind and we are ranked 131 out of 189 countries. At present, disconcerting reports reveal that the top 10% of India's population controls a staggering 77% of nation's total wealth. In 2017, a staggering 73% of wealth generated has reportedly gravitated towards the wealthiest 1%, while staggering 670 million Indians constituting the poorest half of the population saw their wealth increase by a mere 1%. This stark disparity presents a crucial challenge in ensuring that millions of people living below the poverty line have access to fundamental necessities like food, 
shelter and health care a prerequisite for advancing towards developed nation status. While India boasts of a sizable youth population, high unemployment rates pose a significant hurdle to leveraging this demographic advantage. Addressing these challenges paramount, necessitating a concerted focus on job creation and the encouragement of entrepreneurship. It is essential to enable India's youthful population to contribute substantially to the country's economic growth and development. Despite India being the world's fifth largest economy, our per capita GDP falls far behind that of developed nations. Tackling this economic growth challenge requires pro-growth government policies, maintaining low inflation, reducing interest rates, elevating unemployment, fostering a skilled workforce, bolstering purchasing power, stimulating demand, and enhancing the healthcare and education sector. India must prioritize the development of a globally competitive, labor-intensive manufacturing sector capable of generating significant employment opportunities. In sum, addressing the pressing issue of high youth unemployment is a pivotal step for India's much toward developed nation status by 2047. I am impatient. I do not want to wait till 2047.